Hello! My name is Mars, and welcome back to Shadows Over Loathing. If I'm doing my math correctly, this episode should be uploaded on my birthday, so happy birthday to me. But maybe not happy birthday to me, because I'm about to face something that might be kind of tricky. Um, I need one more gator hide, I believe, for my gator hide side quest. And... The only way I can think of to do that right now, instead of just wandering and finding a random event, um, is to fight these guys who are looking at their obelisk. I don't know how representative, representative the size of this crowd is going to be. Actually, um, how representative it is of the number of enemies that will be in the combat but I can only assume that there will be quite a few enemies in the combat. Um, I went and made, I had a lot of anarchist hardware, so I went and made some more combat items. So I feel like I've been using them up, using them up a little bit. Um, so I feel like I'm prepared for this. If not, oh well. Oh, oh, I went into the obelisk. I didn't re realize I could do that. Um. Oh my. A long and knotty finger of Eldritch energy. That's not what I expected to happen. Huh. Hey Molly. I saw something about a ghostly version of Molly and I do see her. I make the thing go in the middle or something? I don't know what I'm supposed to do here. Um... Is there something in here? Oh, hey! This is where the guy... Curious. The tree is here, but none of the other junk the Gatorman had gathered. So... Ah, so this is like a ghost realm. So I'm seeing a ghost version of Molly and a ghost version of the cactus. Or the tree or whatever. But a real version of the ghost I saw. Okay. Say something. Something. Ha ha. <laughs> I can read backwards. I'm smart. Wait, I don't sound like that. I can see everything. I can see everything? What do you mean? In the portal. Huh? Oh god. And it goes up and down. And up, down and up. In addition to... Bottom to top is what I mean to say. It goes bottom to top in addition to going right to left. That's cool. Never seen that take on backward speech before. In the portal. I can see everything that ever was and ever will be. Everything that is to be known in our world, in this one, and all the worlds in between. Oh, okay, okay, it just translated it for me. I don't think it's safe here. He needs to know everything. Sure you don't want to leave? According to the floating man, all worldly knowledge is contained in the swirling, convulsing starfield, a kind of superterrestrial library. Your eyes bend to the writhing contours of the deep black and star-smeared tunnel, preparing nervously to receive the sum of all human and extraterrestrial knowledge. In the tunnel's right center, you see a field and a cow suckling a puffin. What? The farmer is watching. That's fine, but not what I'm looking for. The floating man does not even react to your presence. I don't think this portal contains the sum total of all worldly knowledge. I think it's just letting you look at a farm where a cow is nursing a puffin, and there is a farmer standing nearby and watching. That's all that's happening. Hello. You're really enjoying that, huh? Can't leave. Why not? Midnight man. 
You can't leave because of the Midnight Man? Okay. Um. Oh. I moved the portal in here. Oh, that's right. I can... Oh, I moved the portal. Does that mean that the obelisk? Um, the obelisk is gone, but they're still, like, enthralled by it. What's that about? Hold on, I want to go through the portal again. So I'm moving the portal around. Um... What am I doing here? I feel like I need to make the the guy leave. But I don't know how to do that. Now there's a portal in the tree. Um, okay. Weird. Still weird. Um. I don't really understand what is meant to be happening here. And the hitboxes on these things are weird. I'm just gonna fight some gators, maybe not those gators, and then get my hides and get my gator skin hides and then leave. Because I have no idea what that's about. Plenty of damage. Ah, he killed himself. Oops. Yikes. Okay. Throw that. Him. Oh, bye Molly. It's okay. I am basically untouchable unless someone inflicts bleed on me. Or poison. Gatorman hide, yeah. Okay. Okay. Huh. I guess I'll keep the Gator Man at Obelisk note there. It doesn't mean exactly the same thing as I, it did previously, but... Now I just gotta figure out what the deal is with that, um... That portal. One wet cigarette. This is one of the only objects capable of giving you cancer and tapeworm at the same time. It's really gross. It is. Shadow Milkshake. 
This is what you get if instead of a soda jerk, your local cafe employed a nihilist. Alright. Maybe the cursed fishing rod is what got me the the cigarette. Um hold on. No. Do I have enough gator hides? Yes I do. Gator man hides. Nuts this swamp. Look, my best glad rags are turning into actual rags. He's talking to silk. Silk. Well, I guess now they're silt. Oh, ha ha, you're about as funny as a rubber crutch. Come on, if we keep moving, we'll be done here sooner. Nothing doing. I ain't moving from this spot till I got a proper set of pink covers. She drops a nickel into a nearby payphone and talks into it urgently for a minute. How on earth did you find a payphone in the middle of a swamp? I phoned my pop. He's sending along a pair of his old fishing waders. That isn't what I asked you. Before long, a delivery boy arrives with the waiters and hands them over to Molly with the tip of his cap. Very fashionable. You'd knock him dead at the dance hall. Laugh it up, Buster. If anyone I know gets a peep on me wearing these, you're the one I'm gonna neck dead. Savvy? Okay. Good to see you again, but what would really make me smile is if you had ten gator hides to make my brother a tongue. Beautiful. That's beautiful leather. And it'll make a beautiful tongue. I can look at any animal and tell you what sort of tongue it's title make. You don't believe me, do you? Go on, name any animal. Whale. Is that a trick question? I never heard of a whale. Okay, that's the tongue sorted, but without something to animate it, it's just a lump of leather flesh. Oh, he's a hillbilly. Um, what I need, mate, what my brother Paul really needs, is power of speech. So this next part's not gonna be going to it's going to be much easier to explain if you've ever read The Little Mermaid. I can get you a mermaid, that's no problem. Don't need you to hunt a mermaid, mate. Actually, he might be British. He said something about Albion. I think that might mean England. Um, I don't want to come off sounding like an idiot, so I'm just going to... I'm just going to... Give him a normal, my normal speaking voice, okay? What you might not know is that the fairy tale about a little mermaid who gives up her voice is based on a real life story of a gator man merman who traded his voice for a bucket of ham. That's what gave Hans Christian Anderson, Hans Christian Gator Man the idea. I tracked that voice down to the fishing hole in the gator village I told you about before. I must have it. Anything for my brother. Family's everything, mate. I better be going. Okay. Um. I was just fishing at that fishing hole. He said don't go in here, but I want to go in here. A broken egg? This must be a reference- oh! I jumped. I jumped with right click by accident. It's just a broken egg. Probably a reference to something that I'm not getting. Told you it weren't a pretty sight. I was looking forward to eating the egg all day, and come dinner time I only went and bloody dropped it. Oh yeah, he is British. Okay. Sorry for your loss. I bet. Alright. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm good. Um. So. Should I just go back to the village? I've been spending a lot of time there. Let's get your brother a tongue. In a gloomy grove of sunken cypress trees, a well-muscled woman stands waist-deep in the opaque bod. Her hands... Bog. Her hands rest on the pommel of a sword, its blade lodged in the muck. It catches your eye because it's not the type of thing you tend to see on the east coast. What sword is that? This is the blade of your great-aunt. Many moons ago, it was entrusted to my family for safekeeping. Now it's yours to reclaim for a cost. Why do I have to pay for my family's sword? The security guaranteed by my family is unique and comes with great price. Your great aunt knew this. Is that why she, it is why she placed the blade in our care. What great aunt? Have you forgotten your lineage, girl? Time was every tavern and meeting place kept a plate meeting house kept a fi place by the fire for Hilda Saunders. Okay, what's the cost? In time, I shall ask you a boon, and you shall be obliged to grant it. Sure, I can do a boon. Let's have the sword. Ah, it's worse than... Oh, no. The 
sword has a satisfying heft. You can see why your great aunt liked it so much. But with it comes something quite unsatisfying, something that makes you feel almost queasy and a little cursed. Swamp Gias. I don't know how to say that word. This Gias really grinds your gears. Perhaps that lady from the swamp will tell you soon about the boon she wants in exchange for this thing's removal. What's this? It's a simple magic, binding you to your oath until such time as I have need of your service. On that day, I will find you. Can't we just do the boon thing now? Better be a good sword. It's a great sword. Oh, okay. Well, damn. Well, I don't want to use it. Damn. The, the sword I have right now is better. Voice of the Gator Merman. <clears throat> I think this might be the voice of the Gator Man Merman. Or at least a voice of a Gator Man Merman. And one meat. Okay. That was easy. And I only got freaking cursed to do it. You there! An excessively jovial man struts out from behind the trees. New to these parts, is it? Ever heard of our mud henge? I'll bet you didn't know that it's actually 1.3 times larger than any comparable henge you care to name. What is mud henge, good sir? But he's already gone, disappeared into the mist. Behind him through the trees is mud henge. Okay. Uh Poor unfortunate mailman. Oh. Um. Oh no, the Gator Man detective. You thought he was only a myth. You're a Gator Man detective, I presume. Presumption accurate. Accusing hunters, crimes grievous, butchering Gator Man, killing Man Man, despoying land. Speak you, be accomplice. Hmm. Or be Gator ally. What I can say is I didn't kill that Gator Man mailman. Hmm. Words choice. Words careful. Choice deliberate. Hmm. But. Hmm. Believe you. Found culprits. Caged them. What will you do with those men? Mailman dead. Suspect hunters. Have trial. Find guilty. Consume them. You're gonna eat them? Drink them. Would you let them go, maybe? I am unaccepting. Do justice. Liquefy them. Break him out of there. This guy might be hard. Oh, no. He intends to absolutely scream. Increasing all of his stats by three. And reducing my stats. Okay. He should not be hard. So I can do 24, put 3 bleed on top of the spore poison, and 1 on fire for 7, 8. Um, won't quite be enough. Yes, now it will be. Let's see if the great detective can solve that murder. Gator cage key. It's a typical bone key for a leather man's cage. Detect magnifying glass. Detectives use these to investigate tiny crimes. I mean, he definitely knows who killed him. <laughs> what happened here? Got snatched, didn't I? It's funny. I'm calmer than I thought I'd be. That mailman slaughter has been hanging on my conscience some, and I think I've been expecting the claw of Johnny Law before too long. But Paul, he wasn't wrapped up in this. It's not fair that he should go down for it too. You unlock the cage and toss the key into the waters of the swamp. Close one, mate. That was a close one. Do you know what's occurring to me now? I think I've gone my whole life without ever genuinely thanking somebody. Just never came up. Nobody ever really did anything for me before. But you saved our skin, all right? And you looked out for my brother. So here goes. Thank you. I'm not going to make fun of him. You're welcome. Okay. Getting hairy out here, ain't it? Just want to find Paula voice and be gone. Hand over the ghost of the ba Gator Merman. In haste, John makes a sloppy grab for the jar, knocking and breaking the glass on his boot. A moan of anguish futility is cut short 
when a translucent yellow wisp rises up from the shards, dancing between the trees before shooting directly up Paul's nostrils. John cuts short his hoots of joy when Paul crouches over the spot where the gator man died, closes his eyes, and keens in mourning. His first noise with the new tongue. Enough! Enough of obscene murder and asymmetric service to animalistic desire. Brother, you practice a violence that is worse than base. It is vicious. It is corrupt. It is wrong. I call an end to all aggression. I call it now. At stake is the project of life itself. Paul, what are you saying? Then Paul Leather says three words so painfully profound they reduce his brother to contrite tears. I could do that too if I wanted. What? Eh, it's not important. Come on, tell me. Don't worry about it. Look, everyone's moving on already. John falls to his knees and weeps, moaning in anguish when he sees his reflection in the sodden swamp water. Call the hunting, the killing, all of it. I did it to bring back your voice. In finding me your, a tongue, you gave away your heart. No longer can I recognize our blood in the ocean of it you have spilled. I call you brother no more. This doesn't seem like a conversation I need to be here for. Leave this place, man. Okay. I don't know. He's obviously not talking to me, because this game is usually pretty good about, um... Gendering your character correctly. So I think he's talking to his brother, but he's, he's saying it like, Leave this place, man. Or, Leave this place, man. I don't know how he's saying it, and I feel like that would inform how I read his voice quite a lot. This can't be goodbye, brother. I don't wish it. Know that if I see you again, it will be for the last time. I will use the last of my life to build a ladder to heaven of my own, so that I may protect the dinosaurs from men like you. Good stuff, everyone. <laughs> okay. That was awkward. Um. Oh! She's doing a little dance. I've never seen that before. Okay. Um. <laughs> There's a lot of stuff to... To look at now. This is a very crowded. This is a very crowded uh, area. Um, let's check out one of these places I unlocked while wandering. This one I actually unlocked off screen. The monster shack. Barf weevils. Yay. Monster shack. No skeptics. These kids are alright. Well, that's pretty heartwarming. You're not sure if this is forbidding access or describing the shack's occupants. Inside you find not the decayed and crumbling tumble-down shack strewn with ancient wreckage that you were perhaps expecting, but actually maintained and fairly clean tumble-down shack strewn with 12 to 14-year-old kids. What the? Hey, what are all you kids doing out here in the middle of the swamp? Why shouldn't we be? Because it's dangerous here. Yeah, but this is where the monsters are. That, that's why it's dangerous. Do you believe in monsters, lady? Yes, of course I do. It would be a real feat of cognitive dissonance otherwise. I mean, you've seen them? Ooh, for really real? Well, yeah. Which one? Which one? Vampires? Oh, those don't count. Those guys are just weird jerks. We're looking for real monsters. That's quite a hat you've got there, bud. I don't understand what real means in this context. Since you believe in monsters, you can join our monster squad. Otherwise, we can't tell you anything because it's secret. Okay, I'll join. Great! It'll be nice to have someone who can reach the top shelf on those old bookshelves we scavenged. Is that it? I'm a member now? Yeah. We used to have a big ceremony where you had to repeat a vow and stuff. But it took too long and we are all busy with our research. Come on in and have a look around. Thanks! Big leather-bound tome sits on a pedestal here. What's this book? Less the vampire nests. It's like 400 pages long. Lots of vampires in this swamp. If you want to help, you can always go clear some of them out. Not right now. This kid is, uh, well, he's eating something. Uh, hi there. Hi! I don't mean to be rude, but what's your deal, kid? I'm a moss man. You are, huh? Okay, well, not really. But I want to be a moss man when I grow up. That's why I'm eating all this fertilizer. Um, it's actually cornflakes. I'm just pretending. Okay, whew. Haha, <laughs> yeah. I'm not crazy. 
Some people say I'm crazy for believing in the Moss Man, though. But I know he's real. I've seen him. What's a Moss Man? A man made of moss? Yep, he's all fuzzy and green. It's so neat. Oh, hey, you should go see him for yourself. Then if you bring back proof he exists, people won't think I'm weird anymore. Well, they might. Sure, I'll go have a look. Great. Here, I'll mark the place on your map. It's called Boss Rock Grotto. If you see him, try to bring back some Moss's proof, okay? This kid is studying far more intently than you are because of his age. What are you reading? It's about Neanderthals and other early hominids. Unfortunately, I'm not finding anything useful in here. What are you looking for? The honey ape. The what now? You've never heard of it? It's a very famous monster. It's a hairy primate or primate-like creature that's smaller than a human but with human-sized hands. Most of the legends call it Big Hands, but I'm pretty sure the Big Hands legends and the reports of the Honey Ape sightings are referring to the same, same cryptid. That's interesting. I know it lives around here somewhere, I just haven't been able to find it yet. I'll help you look for it. That would be excellent, thank you. Here, I found some of its prints once and made a tracing. That might help you track it down. Try and get one of your, its fingernails as proof. How will a fingernail be proof? Because it'll be as big as a human fingernail, obviously. You are assured that this is the handprint of the honey ape and not just the handprint of a regular guy. Alright. She's making post it. potions. This kid is preoccupied with repeatedly smelling two large test tubes. What if he got there? The fume samples? Kinda. This one is a combination of hydrogen sulfide and methane. Common swamp gas, basically. Ew, what's the other one? coffee to clear the swamp gas smell out of my nose. Huh, okay, so why? I'm researching a creature called, known as the smell of the wisp. I've only run into it once, but I have a good memory for smell, so I figure if I can match the smell, that particular chemical mix will tell me more about it. The smell of what? Wisp. It's a cloud of intelligent swamp gas. Some people say it's the ghost of a dead chili cook-off judge, but I think there's probably a more scientific explanation. You're telling me you're looking for an intelligent... The girl gestures sternly at the sign of her workbench. No fart jokes. Oh, come on. It's a smell of the wisp. No. Well, I don't know what to say then. If you're willing to help instead of wanking, poor Al goofs. I could really use a sample to analyze. Okay, I'll go find the smell of the wisp. Great, thank you. Here, take this. It should help you track the thing down. A big cone designed to make it so people who have lost their sense of smell can still tell what they've stepped in. I just smell through this? Yeah, just follow your nose. Alrighty then. Do all of these kids have a side quest for me? Oh my goodness. That's a lot of side quests. This kid has a ball cap with a sinister looking triangle on it and is messing around with an elaborate home radio. Hi there. Hi! Say, you're a grown-up. Can you help me with something? I'm not buying you any cigarettes. No, no. There's this swamp lady, lady named Barbara, Yarag Barbara Yagara. Everybody says she's just a fairy tale, but I know she's real because I've seen her hut right here in the swamp. But I don't know if she's the sort, of, the sort of swamp lady who eats kids or not. Swamp lady? Well, I don't want to call her a swamp witch or a swamp hag or stuff like that. It would be mean to judge her that way without I even having met her. Sheesh, kids these days. All right, I'll check her out for you. Great, thanks. Here, I'll mark her hut on your sponge. Map? Anyways, bring back a feather to prove you met her, okay? She has feathers? I mean, from one of her pet birds. The stories say she has a ton of them. How will you know if it isn't just an ordinary feather I found somewhere? Well, you seem like a trustworthy person. Then why do you need me to bring proof at all? Because that's how quests work. Come on. Ask about the radio. What's the radio for? Hmm? Oh, this isn't related to Barbara Yager or anything. I'm just trying to find a, a station so we can get some music in here. The reception in this swamp is terrible, though. I see. Any chance you can get WGCR on that radio? I can't seem to get any station right now, sorry. It's okay, I was just curious. Okay, so the fact that... It... The fact that it's giving me the option to ask again tells me that I'm gonna be able to get him, him reception, so... Keep this radio in mind. Nice hat. What's the triangle mean? Thanks. It's the Great Pyramid. One of them, anyway. Ever seen them? Only on your hat. Not personally. Well, maybe you will someday. 
Sure, who knows? Foreshadowing? This kid is peering at a terrarium filled with flies and occasionally tapping on her glass. Hi there, are you uh, into flies? Well, kinda. They're interesting once you get over the gross factor. But mostly I'm just studying these because what I'm really interested in is the fly man. The fly man? Yeah, or maybe the man fly. I haven't decided which way is better yet. I'm giving these kids all different voices. I'm never gonna be able to remember who gets what. So what is the fly man and or man fly? He's a scientist that moved into the old Flemberg Palace. Flemberg Place. I did a little spying on him, and I think he's trying to turn himself into a giant fly. Why would anyone want to do that? I don't know. That's what's so interesting about him. Huh. She looks at her feet and blushes a little. Um, also, he's really handsome. <laughs> I was this teenager. Oh my god. For now, you mean. Well, yeah, I'd really like to meet him, but I'm too shy. Can you help me out? Sure, I'll help. Oh, thank you. Here, I'll show you where the house is. <laughs> if you could meet him, could you um bring me back a souvenir? Like what? Maybe um one of his chest hairs? <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> sure. <laughs> uh... This kid is messing around with some kind of weird mechanical contraption. What's this, th this thing you're making? I don't really know yet. I'm just kind of messing around with it because I'm taking a break from my main project. Hey, you know anything about the chupa naranja? I try to avoid spicy food. It gives me the hiccups. No, this is the kind of monster that eats oranges. They're supposed to be from way down south, but I know there's one in this swamp somewhere. Unfortunately, no matter what kind of trap I build, it keeps escaping. Do you want to try? I appreciate that they actually, you know, took the, the, um, made the effort to accurately translate chupacabra into something that also makes sense. Because chupa means suck and cabra means goat. And chupacabra means something that sucks a goat's blood. So if it's chupa naranja, that I shouldn't be doing the the huh with so much phlegm. Chupa naranja, um, that's a, a creature that sucks the juice out of oranges, I suppose. All right, sure, why not? Great, feel free to use my workbench over there. I've got plenty of spare parts and stuff. If you manage to catch it, bring me back one of its nostrils as proof, okay? A nostril, not a, the whole head or pelt? Oh no, I don't want to kill it. Just prove that it's out there. Okay then. Oops, I didn't see that. Close it. Dozens of volumes of serial fantasy for young adults older than average children. For instance, Claude Ramirez on the Throne of the Slime, Saga of Virgil White and Grace Alexander, Ira Walker and the Planet of Gold. I'm not going to read all those. It's a workbench covered with tools and oranges. Build a chupa neuron hot trap. You grab some scrap metal from the bench and construct a very basic animal trap. Would you like to make any refinements? Can I do all of these? Batteries and fuses haven't done much for me, so I might as well use them up. It's a homemade chupanadan hot trap of dubious quality. Let's go hunting. A cat! The little sign in the table says, Boris only. This cat had better be Boris or there's gonna be trouble. I thought that was a calico. Aren't calico cats all female? Oh well, they can name a cat anything they want They want to. Boris hisses at you. He must, he must know you're an outsider. Oh, uh, do I gotta do all these quests? Okay, wow. How's the map looking now? Wow, there's a lot of stuff. Um, okay, so these kids have hooked me up with quite a lot of things to do. And I guess I'll get started on them in the next episode. So, I have been Mars. And I will be back with more Shadows Over Loathing.